Hi friends, my name is Katie B. And I'm Katie D. And we are with the Sacramento Public Library where books are just the beginning. Today, we're here to share a couple of titles from the National Network of Libraries of Medicine's Reading Club, which provides book club materials for health-related titles. They have book suggestions for the different topics and feature discussion questions for each title. This video's topic will highlight disability health. So Ms. Katie, what book did you read? Okay, uh, so for this topic, I read Switched On, A Memoir of Brain Change and Emotional Awakening by John Elder Robeson. So Robeson is widely known for his authority in public speaking about Asperger's and Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD. His first book titled Look Me in the Eye, My Life with Asperger's, which was published in 2007, was his memoir following his diagnosis at the age of 40 and quickly launched him into the spotlight regarding ASD. He has since written three other books, including Switched On, and continues his work to highlight ASD and the numerous research studies being conducted around it. This memoir details his experience participating in a research study at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston <laughs> using transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS, to understand the connections between autism and its effects. Um, the introduction made it very clear that this account is individual, personal, and unique to Robeson. So reactions to the study by other participants may vary. Robeson had a long and successful career in the music industry, configuring sound systems for large musical performances and most notably designing the fire-breathing guitars for KISS. Robeson explains intricate neurological concepts by making analogies to the music and sound equipment that he configured, with the analogies often either supported or refuted by research doctors. So he does a great job of explaining medically complex situations to the layperson even while using anatomical vocabulary. Um, it reminded me of all the biology and physiology classes that I had to take during my undergrad studies. Um, he did a lot of research on his own time to better understand the mechanics of TMS and then related it back to his background in sound production and the connectivity that took place inside the speakers. Um, so he's a wonderful storyteller and was able to convey the intense emotions he felt before, during, and after the TMS study and how the emotional awakening altered things in his life that he never expected. So research and prep work for medical studies is very extensive and impressive. Um, he makes the point that the conclusion paper was published a few years after the study was conducted and that it was a rather uh, dry experience uh, compared to the emotional one that he had. So this story reminded me to use person-first language be conscious of both visible and invisible disabilities, mm -hmm. and to rewatch a documentary series on Netflix called The Mind Explained. Mm -hmm. But while the documentary does not cover Asperger's or ASD specifically, it's still a fascinating look into features of the mind that doctors, scientists, and researchers are working to discover. And it's narrated by Emma Stone, and I probably should have led with that. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about your book, Ms. Katie. Yes, well, thank you. So I read Every Note Played by Lisa Genova, and I wanted to just share what the uh, diseases that the book centers around. So it's ALS, which I hope that I do this justice, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So it's a group of rare neurological diseases that mainly involve the nerve cells responsible for controlling voluntary muscle movement. So voluntary muscles, produce movements like chewing, walking, and talking. The disease is progressive, meaning that symptoms get worse over time, and currently there is no cure for ALS and no effective treatment to halt or reverse the progression of the disease. So there's some great information on the National Institutes of Health page, so mm -hmm. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description box below. So as for the book, <laughs> this is the story of Richard, an accomplished pianist who develops ALS in his mid-40s. He lived his life playing at famous concert halls and touring the world, often leaving his wife and daughter alone for long stretches at a time. That, paired with his numerous affairs and egotistical attitude, lead him to divorce. And the story opens with Richard making the decision to cancel his upcoming tour because his right hand stops working and his left soon follows. He feels his frustration as he discovers that he can no longer do what he loves, play piano. And his ex-wife, Karina, hasn't seen him in a year and heard secondhand about his diagnosis. At first, she's in denial, 
and thinks it must be a mistake. By the time that she sees him again four months later, he's significantly declined and she must accept the reality. Though Karina spent the time since their divorce hating Richard, she realizes that she must step in to help care for him. Richard moves into the home that they shared and Karina sacrifices her freedom to be his caregiver. Over the span of 15 months, you see Richard lose his ability to use his hands, then his ability to swallow properly, then his voice, then his legs, and finally his ability to breathe on his own. But this book is about so much more than Richard's diagnosis. It's about forgiveness. Richard is asking for forgiveness for how he treated Karina and his daughter. Karina is asking for forgiveness for giving up on Richard and on herself. And the way the story culminates by the end of Richard's life is just moving and Geneva had me sobbing in the last few pages. I went through a few tissues at the end of it. She is a wonderful writer. She has a PhD in neuroscience from Harvard University. So you learn about ALS from an expert point of view throughout the story and her ability to educate the audience on this disease while also writing a compelling story is just impressive. And there's a line that stood out to me that I just have to share. Um, and it's as Richard is reflecting on his inability to play a beautiful grand piano that sat just in front of him. He says, and I'm paraphrasing, it's like sitting in an impressive sports car, but not being able to open the garage. Mm -hmm. It sums up his frustration with the fact that his brain was still active and he had the passion to play, but his body just wouldn't agree with him. Thank you for sharing that. both very powerful titles. So, Absolutely. and yeah, you know, lucky for you, both of them that we've talked about today are available in both print and digital format from our library collection. For more information about our health literacy initiatives, our accessibility services, and upcoming virtual programs, you can go to our website at www.saclibrary.org. Uh, be sure to like our Facebook page and share with friends for SPL and Katie and Katie. Happy reading. Bye. Bye.